extend the peace of the God of Israel to each and every one of you this holy Sabbath day. I welcome you once again to the Holy Convention of the New Covenant Congregation of Israel. It's always a very great blessing for us to be able to come together and reason out of the scriptures that was left us by our fathers, that we might just consider the things that are written herein, that we might do what's necessary, that God might find it in his heart to, uh, to save us as he's promised to save those that has done his will. Amen. Many people have, have uh, went into the scriptures and we know the deal. They've taught a bunch of lies and hypocrisies out of the scriptures. And what we've been trying to do within the past two months was give you some things, some ammunition to deal uh, with people uh, with. And if you if you study the scriptures that was given you in these various classes, you'll find out that those uh, were building blocks that was given that, that unlock quite a few doors for you so that you won't be foolish in the word of God. Because how can a man be foolish in the word of God and then say he know God? God is a God of knowledge. If any man like wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, what he does is he asks the God of Israel. And God gives us those things liberally, but not for ourselves. The reason why we are given these things is so that we might put down the gainsayers and pull those that are given over to chance out of the fire and bring them to the shepherd's tent that uh, that they also may be saved. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to pick up where we left off at last week. I think I got about two more classes to do in this series and then we'll do some other things. Uh, we're going to pick up where we left off last week. We're going to pick this up in, uh, in uh, Acts, the first chapter, Acts 1. And verse 1. But Brother Steve, read the oracles of the church and invite him who stands at the door that he, he may come and sup with us and us with him, that we may continue reading out of this great legacy that we might be saved. I'm going to read the church oracles beginning at 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. <coughs> but the end of all things is at hand. Be you, therefore, sober, and watch unto prayer. And above all things, have fervent love among yourselves, for love shall cover the multitude of sin. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man hath received a gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good steward of the manifold grace of God. Amen. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Yeshua, the anointed one, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearer. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be you kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for the anointed one's sake, have forgiven you. Amen. Be you, therefore, followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as the anointed one also have loved us, and have given himself love and offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savior. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become a saint. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Amen. Revelation chapter 3, verses 20 through 22. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am sat down with my father in his throne. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the church. Amen. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. I got this class entitled, The New Church been a lot it's a lot of speculation and a lot of doctrines out into the streets today as to how the new church was set up and what we're going to do today 
is we're going to cover, uh, cover the book of Acts, which is the first 30 years of the church. And we're going to pick this up right after uh, uh, the Messiah was resurrected and had anointed the altar in heaven from the uncleanness of the children of Israel and had returned to uh, 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 set up things uh, uh, among the apostles. Now, out of all the questions that the apostles had, uh, had asked, there was one question that hadn't been answered, and that question was, when was God going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Everybody knew that the kingdom was going to be restored to Israel, but the problem was they didn't know the time that it was going to be restored. So what let's do, and this conflicts with what man is saying today. Man saying today that he's going off to heaven, and he's going to sit down, put on his white robe and his, his starry crown, and he's going to sit down in heaven, and he's going to, Rain and rain and rain and rain and rain forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. But this is not what the, this is contrary to the doctrine that was given uh, uh, the apostles. If we don't have an opportunity to rule this earth for a thousand years, then truly mankind will not be saved. Uh, 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 Acts 1, and pick that up at verse 1. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Yeshua began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up after he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen by them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Hmm. And, being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which says he, you have heard from me. Mm -hmm. But John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. Mm -hmm. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Right. These things here are secret to God. When God is going to restore that, uh, that kingdom, it's secret to him. You don't need to know these things anyway because y'all, uh, uh, it's, it's not going to be in your time. It's going to be in the time of the reformation of all things. Like, I, like the Messiah had told him before, blindness uh, 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 had happened to Israel until the time of the Gentiles would come in, until they reached their fulfillment. And their fulfillment is to set up a man that they're going to worship as God <coughs> on this whole earth. Once they complete the time period that was given to them, then the kingdom of Israel will be destroyed restored uh, to the children of Israel. But go ahead and read, my brother. Verse 8. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me in both Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, Behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, You men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? This same Yahshua, who is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. He's going to return with the clouds of heaven. Now, Paul said, We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. But the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with, with the shout, with the voice of an archangel and the trump of God. And then he said, the dead in Christ shall lie, rise first. Then we that are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet them in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. But what you do right there at the end of verse 11, what you do is you go read Zechariah 14 chapter, and Zechariah 14 chapter tells you the exact place that the Lord is going to return to this earth. The Lord isn't just going to show up like Christians say, just show up. He's so afraid he's not going to come to the earth. He's going to take people off the earth. Well, according to the prophets, it's the wicked that's going to be gathered out of the earth, not those that are going to uh, live in the kingdom of God. Uh, 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 I think you picked that up in Revelation 11. I'm not sure. Uh, 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 come, sheep, brother. Verse 12. Then return they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where both Peter and James, John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Yehudas the son of James. Hmm. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, 
the mother of Yahshua, and with his brother. Okay, now let's go to chapter 2 and verse 1. Now, Peter was the one that stood up among the apostles at that time because Peter was the one that the Lord had given the keys to the kingdom, and whatsoever he bound on earth would be bound in heaven. And uh, what Peter is in the process of doing now is using one of those uh, 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 first keys. So go ahead and read uh, chapter 2 and pick that up at verse 1, my brother. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now these are, these, this is Israel now that this has happened to. These are Jews that are assembled together in one accord, and the Holy Ghost came upon them. Now Christ had told them that they was going to be endowed with power uh, uh, from on high, and he told them, say, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to send you the promise of my Father, which is the Holy Ghost. And the spirit we have is the same spirit that Christ had, the spirit of his Father. There's but one spirit, okay? Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because every man heard them speak in his own language. Uh, that piece of scripture that I, uh, when uh, I was talking about the, er the angel casting in his sickle and reaping the earth, the uh, wicked being re uh, reaped out of the earth, you find that in uh, Revelation 14, and pick it up at verse 14. Go ahead and uh, read uh, Steve. Verse 7. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these who speak Galilee? Are not all these people Jews here? Aren't all these people from Galilee? Hmm? Go ahead, brother. Verse 8. And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Parthenians and Russians and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and in Cappadocia in Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, in Egypt, and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Greeks and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. That's what speaking in tongues is all about. See? Folks get up and get to doing that jibber-jabbering, but you notice the apostles spoke Hebrew. See? And when they spoke, regardless of where these people here came from or what language they spoke, they understood what was being said. That's what speaking in tongues is all about. Not that jibber-jabber they're doing in the church. Go ahead and uh, read, my brother. Verse 12. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What mean of this? Others, mocking, said, These men are full of new wine. Hmm. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, You men of Judea and all you that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. But these are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken to the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Now, when you go and read Joel, it seemed like God had poured his, flesh, his, his spirit out on all flesh at this time, but he didn't. It, it said in the last days, in verse 17, it said, and it shall come to pass that's in the last, that, that in the last days, God uh, said, God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and so forth and so on. Well, that's in the last days. We're not living in the last days now. We're living in latter days. The last days is during the days of the millennial period when Christ is going to set up his kingdom upon this earth. This spirit had to be poured upon the house of Israel first because this was Israel's inheritance from God. And it had to go from Israel to the whole earth. This is why if it would be set up to where all the nations would have been accepted in this thing from the beginning and had power to deal with the, uh, with the church in the beginning, then truly God had the power to have Gentiles among those apostles. Hmm? But like Paul said, Glory and honor to the Jew first, and then to the nation. And this is something Israel don't want to deal with because we love everybody. See, we the richest slaves on earth, but we love everybody. We haven't got any land, and we haven't got any governor, uh, a governmental uh, body set up, but we love everybody. Go ahead and read, Steve. I have a question. So, is this a dual prophecy? About what? When you said uh, that Joel was 
Yeah. It wasn't, wasn't the scripture poured out on all flesh, then it was poured out on Jews. I mean, I know it wasn't poured out on all flesh. Well, that's what he said, didn't he? Wasn't it? Yeah. <coughs> he said, I was going to pour my spirit upon all flesh, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Right? He didn't pour it on all flesh. He poured it on the Jews, didn't he? Huh? Yeah. So it's a time for all things. Sure, God is going to give the spirit to other men, but it's a time for all things. It was given to the house of Israel first. Everything has to be given to the house of, house of uh, Judah first. <laughs> Judah is the majestic white horse that the Lord is going to ride in the battle, right? So everything is going to have to be given to Judah first. When the kingdom is set up, it's the governors of Judah that's going to rule this, uh, the, uh, the whole earth. So it's to the Jew first. Okay, so what is what was happening here, my brother, is that it was the beginning of the pouring out upon the spirit of all flesh. Okay, and it happened. It had to happen that uh, uh, salvation had to begin at the house of Jude, uh, 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 Judah first, and then spread to uh, uh, the rest of the world. Okay, okay, come she. Verse eighteen. And on my servants, and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord comes. And since that great and notable day that of, the, of the Lord, that truly God's Spirit will be poured out upon all flesh that's going to receive eternal life. Go ahead and read, my brother. Verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You men of Israel, hear these words. Yeshua of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourself also know, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of Yah, you have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, hmm. whom Elohim have raised up, having hmm. loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. Verse 32. This Yahshua have Elohim raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of Elohim exalted, and having received from Yahweh the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this, which you now see it here. Hmm. But David is not ascended into the heavens, but he says himself, Yahweh said unto my Lord, Sit down my right hand, until I make your foes your footstool. Now therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that Elohim have made that same Yahshua whom you have crucified, both Lord and Messiah. Mm -hmm. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yahshua, the anointed one, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now this is the remission of the sins that are past, not for the remission of the sins that, are, that you commit after baptism. The sins that you commit after baptism, you're going to have to give an account for, and this is one of the reasons why you have a, a, an intercessor that stands on the right hand of the majesty on high, so that he can make intercessions, intercessions for the saints according to his will according as, as your righteousness and according as your works may be. Now, 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 so Peter used one key right then, right? Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 39. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are for all, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Okay. Verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day that were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Verse 19. 3 and 19. Mm -hmm. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Now we know that uh, by reading the narrative, we understand that our people had gotten off into a bunch of hypocrisy. And it didn't just start. It didn't just start just before the came, coming of Christ. This started way back before the Babylonian Empire. And it made itself manifest down during the time when, uh, 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 during the Maccabean period, it made itself manifest then, especially with uh, uh, <laughs> brothers like that we had to deal with, like John Hycranus. This was the brother that broke in David's tomb and, and, and took the silver out of the tomb to pay uh, 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 to pay uh, uh, the Roman 
uh, 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 that uh, the monies that uh, that what they call it. Yeah, the tribute money that, that the Romans had demanded of him. And, and that's what started our people to rob in the graves of all the other tombs. These things take took place down, right during the time uh, uh, right during the time of uh, uh, Anthony, Cleopatra, and uh, uh, Ptolemies, and uh, uh, Onesius, who was the, uh, the high priest at that time. This was during the time that, that, the, uh, that the scrolls was transplanted in... Uh, and uh, was was uh, not transplanted when the so when the scrolls were rewritten when they was translated in the Greek for the time uh, uh, so the Europeans uh, could understand these things and we read a piece of scripture that said once that the Lord was going to build an altar in Egypt the Lord built a temple back in those days in Egypt it wasn't only a a, a temple uh, 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 in Egypt it was also a temple that was set up at Mount Gizera in the land of Israel and these two these two factions of our priests had problems with each other. And the problems is what brought about the, uh, uh, a whole lot more paganism as they began to incorporate uh, 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 the deities of the nation into uh, uh, Judaism in order to gain favor of the Romans. And you can pick up all of that in, uh, in, uh, in the works of Josephus uh, if you get the care to read it. But go ahead and read, Steve. Verse 20, 20. And he shall sing a sure, the anointed one, who before was preached unto you, whom the heavens must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Restitution, that means the restoring of all things, right? The restoring of all things here upon the earth. People talk about they're going up to heaven. Well, if they're going up to heaven, what would be the reason for restoring all these things? Go ahead and read, my brother. Verse 22. And Moshe truly said unto the fathers, a prophet shall Yahweh, your Elohim, raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall you hear in all things, whatever he shall say unto you. Hmm. And it shall come to pass that every soul who will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Hmm. Yes, and all the prophets from Samuel and those who follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. You are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying, unto Abraham, and in your seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you first, Yah, having raised up his son, Yeshua, sent him to bless you, and turning away every one of you from his iniquity. You are the children of the prophets, being the house of Israel, and you are the inheritance of the covenants which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, and in your seed, meaning the Messiah, and and uh, when, he to when, he, when he told that to uh, Isaac, he was talking about Jacob. But in Abraham, he said, uh, uh, And in your seed shall all the kingdoms of the earth uh, be blessed unto you first. Everything is given unto you first. Why? So that you can impart these things into the nation. That's what love is all about. That's the way you're supposed to love uh, the nation, by keeping God's commandments and making sure that they keep them towards you. Yeah, come sheep up. Verse 1. I'm sorry, go to chapter 5 and verse 12. Acts chapter 5, verse 12. And by the hand of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in slow mode forward. And the rest and of the rest there no man joined himself to them, but the people magnified them. Hmm. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes, both of men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some hmm. of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folk and them who were vexed with unclean spirits, and they will heal every one of them. Now this was a, this was given to this power was given to the apostles for a reason. Because the people had to, be, had to be convinced that there was something very special that was going on among the house of Israel. See, that's why they was able to do all of these signs. Now, you notice everybody talking about these Christian folks talking about, well, if you don't speak in signs, you ain't, uh, I mean in tongues, you ain't got the Holy Ghost, right? Let me see you do some healing. Let me see you raise the dead. Okay. Add that to it, too. Uh, go ahead now. Read. See, don't want, they don't want to bother them things, see. And another thing black folks don't do now. See, we got that speaking in tongues from them charismatics. The fundamentalists didn't, de didn't deal with that. And one other thing those uh, charismatics do, 
The black folks do not deal. Israel do not deal with. Jake do not handle them snakes. See? See? Jake walk all around that, see? But Jake will stand over in the corner and convince you to do it. So you can do it. Come on, it's easy to speak in tongues. Just start. Just open your mouth and let it flow out. And then you stand up and do some foolishness in the, in the face of the angel of God. And the angel be standing around looking at you like you're crazy. Simple truck. Simple truck. Brother, have you seen the ladies that they were showing now where they're walking on hot coals? Oh, man, folks been doing that, brother. That's not a that's not a Christian thing. They trying to bring it over into a Christian thing, just like they they are, just like they did with all the other customs of the people, man. Uh, them folks over the Middle East been walking on live coals for years, brother. Ain't no problem walking on live coals. Ain't no problem walking on hot coals, brother. Go ahead now. You'd be surprised the things that you can do that won't cause you no problem and cause other people problems. Brother, you mentioned Yeah, I saw them. I saw them hollering like mad too, weren't they? Yeah, I saw them, but got sticking them nails in them hands while they feel through the hand of right between the joints there. And when they get that nail, sink that nail in there, boy, they was hollering. Foolishness. See? That's all it is. Foolishness. Now, here they're going to portray. I, I'm, I guess they figured they was the Lord for a day. They got a program come on Queen for a day. I guess they thought they was the Lord for a day, huh? But when they got to sticking them nails, brother, they kind of wish they was. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. Anything, they do it. They do it this whole Easter week. Then they'll go, they'll go walking through Jerusalem, drag some Gentile, just dragging across through Jerusalem, right? Ain't nobody helping him now like somebody helped the Messiah. But they're going to walk through there just dragging across and so forth, mimicking, mimicking the God of the whole earth. Now, don't you think God is going to recompense that, at that to them uh, by in, for them in cooperating that pagan sun worship? Huh? Don't you think God is going to recompense it to them by, by bringing them damn eggs, right? Telling ch children that the rabbits brought the egg, and they none of that got nothing to do with Christ. We didn't read nothing about no rabbits in the scripture. Right, see, the Lord told you told us exactly how we are supposed to perform each one of the, uh, the, 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 uh, the rituals that go along with his feast. And none of these things are mentioned. The doctrine of men. But I tell you what. Sunday. Now, we've already had Passover, right? Turn on your TV Sunday morning and watch. Folks going to be all up on Stone Mountain talking about, he is risen. I said, my Lord rose a long time ago. What you talking about? You know. Yeah. They're worshiping the sun. They're talking about the angel of the sun is risen. And we know who the angel of the sun is. Satan himself has been transformed into an angel of light, right? And his, he have his ministers out here that are teaching Christ uh, to contention. And Satan is angel of the sun. Satan was the sun that was sent forth, that was supposed to bring forth the fruit of this earth and didn't do it. Go ahead and read, brother. First, <coughs> chapter 5, verse 17. Then the high priest rose up and all they that were with him, which is the set of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the town of prison. Why? Because they was healing folks. <laughs> So they thought this was going to cause them some problem because all the people were seeing these notable miracles that was being done. These high power preachers wasn't taken care of and politicians weren't taken care of. So what they did, thinking they're going to lose their place among the people, they grabbed them and put them in jail. And the same thing bears, well, they don't put us in jail, but every time we go to another organization, especially a Christian organization, or Muslim, and sit down and talk and reason with folks out of this world here, let us go a few times, the first thing they're going to do is ask us to leave. We don't want no truth in here. We worship Satan in here. We, we fought with them white folks all these years for them to let us come into their churches. Now we're in their churches. We know that they worship Satan. See? And we don't want you in here with us because this is where we get our, our oil, our flax, and our wine, and our friendship. It comes from the Gentiles. And they're God. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 19. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. Hmm. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and talked. But the high priest came and they that were with him and called the council together and all the senate of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told, saying, the prison truly found we shut with all safety, and the people standing without before the doors, 
But when we had opened, we found no man within. Hmm. Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priest heard these things, they doubted of them how this would grow. Hmm. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. I bet that freaked them out. Yeah, go ahead and read, brother. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence. But they feared the people, least they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did we not straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Hmm. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Amen. The God of our fathers raised up Yeshua, whom you slew and hanged on the tree. Him have God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. And we are his witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God has given to them that obey him. When they heard that, they were cut to their heart and took counsel to slay them. Then stood up there one in the council, a Pharisee named Galilee, a master of the law, held in reputation among the people and put to and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space. Hmm. And said unto them, You men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do as such in these men. For before these days rose up status, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who were slain, and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the registration, and drew away many people after him. He also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And the same thing is going to happen to all of the false prophets that raise up, especially those uh, who know who we are and raise themselves up and, and uh, uh, don't do the things that they're supposed to do, considering themselves to be some great one, they're going to perish. All you got to do is watch. And their flock is going to be scattered. Go ahead and read, my brother. Verse 38. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel of this work be a man, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it. Least perhaps you be found even to fight against God. Hmm. And to him they agreed. And when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Yahshua and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Hmm. And daily in the temple and in every house they ceased not to teach and preach Yahshua, the anointed one. And in those days, when the number of the disciples were multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews, because their widows were neglected in the daily administration. Mm -hmm. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not me that we should leave the word of God and serve Christ. Right. No, we don't have to go out here and uh, minister to these people here. I mean, I know that they got us in our, uh, our captivity and service too, but it's not right <coughs> for us to leave the word of God and go serve Christ. Pick out somebody else to do that. Go ahead and read. Verse 3, Wherefore, brethren, look among you for seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith, and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. And a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines, and Cyrenians, and Alexandrians, and of them of Cilicia and of Asia disputing with Stephen. Now, now these were the brothers that came from that Maccabean period. They are the Alexandrians and the uh, 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 and, and the Libertines and Cyrenians. These are the ones that came from that Maccabean period that had some differences in doctrine. You see, and they by them not knowing the, uh, what the word was. See, now they go on. They want to contend with the apostles about these things. See, they were men of letters. And the apostles didn't have any, any letters, but the apostles had something they didn't even think exists. The Spirit of God. 
Go ahead and read, brother. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Got four letters. Yahweh. Father's name written in your forehead and in your right hand. Got four letters. Now let him deal, deal with that. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 10. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. Then they saw born men who said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moshe and against God. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and called him and brought him to the council and set up false witnesses who said, This man ceases not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Yahshua of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moshe delivered us. Yahshua wasn't the only one that said this. The prophets, all the other, some of the other prophets said that too, that these things were going to be changed. What they was going to do was they was going to take that crutch, that animal sacrifice, out of the way. And then you're going to have big problems because then you're going to have to come under the bonds of, uh, uh, of the blood of the Messiah. And once you come under the blood of the Messiah and uh, uh, God gives his angel charge over you, you got a problem. you got a huge problem whether you know it or not. We walk around and pretend, you know, well, I'm me and I'm doing this. You know, I'm going to go do this and I'm going to go do that. But the angel of the Lord is keeping records. And one day regards to how you, th how you think about it, or what you feel about it. One day that record is going to be read. Mm -hmm. Father, let me understand this, Father. You see, uh, a little while back, you said something to the fact that his before, uh, all of us past sin has been forgiven us. From baptism. That's what the baptism, baptism is all about. Once you receive that baptism, from then on, yeah, you're going to have to give it up. You're going to have to answer for it. That's what the judgment is for. That's what the judgment is set for. But you were in the Christian church where we, uh, what, 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 uh, what, what color did you have then? Y'all were serving Satan. They had baptized you to Satan. Did you go to that Christian knowledge to be weak Yes, sir. Definitely so. Wasn't there some people that had been baptized under John's baptism that didn't know that when the Holy Ghost, John was baptizing, wasn't he? Didn't Paul have to rebaptize them folks? Hmm? Okay. Okay. They baptized you in the name of a pagan deity named Jesus Christ. See, we baptize you, baptize you in the name of our, our Yahshua, our Lord and Savior. And to show you uh, that it is a pagan deity, uh, Yahshua's name means Yahweh's salvation, right? So does the English word Joshua. Why didn't they name him Joshua? And one time I was looking at Jesus only and I was re-baptized according to Acts 2.38 and I thought I had fulfilled myself then. But yes, there was even a pagan district name of Jesus. What, didn't Satan say, say he was going to be just like the Most High? Didn't he set up things just accordingly? Hmm? Okay. Okay, there's nothing new under the sun. Everything God said that he was going to do, Satan is running around trying to get it done. Just like God is, uh, I said his son was going to sit on the throne of David, Satan said, I'm going to exalt my throne above the stars of God. I'm going to sit in, 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 the, in, in, in the temple in Jerusalem, right? I'm going to be just like God, didn't he? Well, we know he got his son on the way. He's here on the earth today. Same thing. Yeah, but I may add to what you're saying. In Hebrews 10, 26, it says, For if we say willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sin. But a certain uh, uh, fear for looking forward toward for that day of judgment, which shall devour the adversaries. Mm -hmm. well, I think, too, we have to look at that in the context of the sinful flesh that we inhabit. But certainly, because we come into the knowledge does not mean we are going to all of a sudden stop sinning completely. Because he who said he has no sin is a liar and the truth is not in it. However, with the power that we've been given by the Spirit, we certainly have the ability to know sin before we even participate in it. And any sin that we do participate in is a willful involvement. And that's what and that's what makes sin exceedingly sinful, which means that you're going to come in judgment for it. That's why you got to have the Messiah on your side to, uh, uh, to strengthen you for the work's sake, 
so that uh, so that you can be able to overcome these things. You'll be found worthy, uh, Sabbath Shalom, I understand that, so that you'll be find wor found worthy to receive this kingdom of God, you see. But why should the Lord make intercessions for you when you don't do what he says do? The Christian church go to church on Sunday, right? They change the Sabbath day from Saturday to Sunday, and God say, remember the Sabbath day. So they took it out from among you, right? But yet and still they say, well, we serve in God. But who controls the earth? The Christians. That's who control the power and the might of the earth. Not only that, Elder, here we have historical documentation that relates up with the biblical story. And they chose in their educational system to take any biblical involvement out of the system. So for everybody else, they have that history. Our history directly relates to the biblical story, and we can't even teach our children in school about the Bible because of the separation of church and state. They even went as far as to take prayer out of school. Check that out. See, they allowed them good Christians, allowed uh, that American Civil Liberties Union, allowed Esau's gang to go in and take prayer out of school. But all that was aimed at the house of Israel, so the house of Israel wouldn't even think about praying to God. <laughs> Come, Sheba. Acts chapter 6, verse 15. And all that sat in the council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. Then said the high priest, Are these things so? And he said, Men, brethren, and fathers, hearken, the God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia, when he dwelt in Haran, and said unto him, before he dwelt in Haran, and said unto him, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, and come into the land which I will show thee. Then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Haran. And from there, when his father was dead, he removed himself, removed him into this land in which you now dwell. And he gave him no inheritance in it, no, not so much as to set his foot on. Yet he promised that he would give it to him for a possession and to his seed after him, when as yet he had no child. Now when will this kingdom be given to Abraham? During the millennium period, Abraham will inherit the, uh, uh, this land. Amen. During the millennium period. This is why the Messiah said, uh, many will come and sit down in the kingdom with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But God is not the God of the dead, but God is the God of the living. Yeah, if you're dead, right. you're done. You're without God. Zechariah said he was going to be dead. Yep. Yeah. So did Isaiah. So Isaiah said, you're going to stand in your lot too, didn't you? Exactly. Daniel, all them brothers. See, this thing is of God's choosing. It's not of our choosing. It's a lot of people have tried to serve God and couldn't get close to serving God. You know why? You don't know what those people father said God. Mm. And being under that old order of things, God said, I visit the iniquity upon the fathers and to, of the fathers and to the children, to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Aren't we the fourth generation, the fourth hundred years that's in this captivity? Mm. Isn't these things still upon us? Sure. Okay. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 6. And God spoke on this wise, that his seed should sojourn in a strange land, and that they should bring them into bondage, and entreat them evil four hundred years. And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, saith God, and after that they shall come forth and serve me in this place. Hmm. And he gave him the, circumcision, the covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham begot Esau, who circumcised him the eighth day, and Esau begot Yaakov, and Yaakov begat the twelve patriarchs. And the patriarchs moved with them and sold yourself into Egypt. But Elohim was with him and delivered him out of all his afflictions and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he made him governor over Egypt and all his houses. Now there came a famine over all the land of Egypt and Canaan and great affliction. And our fathers found no substance. But when Yaakov heard that there was corn in Egypt, he sent out our fathers first. And at the second time, Yosef was made known to his brothers, and Yosef's kindred was made known unto Pharaoh. Then sent Yosef and called his father Yaakov to him, and all his kindred, seventy souls. So Yaakov went down into Egypt and died, he and our fathers, and was carried over into Shechem, and laid in this grave that Abraham bought for a sum of money of the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem. But when the time of the promise drew nigh, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt, till another king arose who knew not yourself. The same that subtly with our kindred 
and ill-treated our fathers so that they cast out their young children to the end they might not live. Hmm. In which time Moshe was born and was exceedingly fair and nourished up in his father's house three months. And when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourished him as her own son. And Moshe was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. And when he was full 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him and avenged him that was oppressed and smote the Egyptian. For he supposed his brethren would have understood how that God by his hand would deliver them. But they understood not. And the next day he showed himself to them as they strove and would have set them at one again, saying, Sirs, you are brethren. Why do you wrong one to another? But he that did his neighbor wrong thrust him away, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge over us? Will you kill me as you did the Egyptian yesterday? Then fled Moshe at this saying, and was a stranger in the land of Midian, where he begot two sons. And when forty days were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of the Lord and a flame of fire in a bush. When Moshe saw it, he wandered at the sight. And as he drew near to behold it, the voice of the, of the Lord came unto him, saying, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, and the God of Esau, and the God of Yaakov. Then Moshe trembled, and there not behold. Then said the Lord to him, Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I have seen, I have seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt, and I have heard their groaning, and have come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send you into Egypt. This Moshe, whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge, the same that God sent to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel who appeared to him in the bush. He brought them out after he had shown wonders and signs in the land of Ham and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness forty years. This is that Moshe who said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall Yahweh your Elohim raise up unto you of your brethren like me. Him shall you hear. In other words, he'd be a God and he would be a lawgiver and he would be a deliverer, wouldn't he? Okay, go ahead, brother. Verse 38. This is he that was in the church. This is he that was in the church and the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him in Mount Sinai and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us, whom our fathers would not obey, but thrust, them from, but thrust him from them, and in their hearts turned back again into Egypt, saying unto Aaron, Make us gods to go before us. For as for this Moshe who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we don't know what is to come of him. Verse 48. Nevertheless, the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, and says the prophet, Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will you build me, saith the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? Have not my hands made all these things? You stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ear, you do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do you. Which other prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them who showed before of the coming of the just one, of whom you have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of Yah, and Yahshua standing on the right hand of Elohim, and said, Behold, I see the heavens open, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of Elohim. Then they cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears, and ran upon him with one accord, and cast him out of the city, and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. Right, Saul was the one that was holding the clothes, see. Saul didn't, uh, 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 he didn't believe in the Messiah, see. So he was the one that was standing up there holding the clothes of the people that was attacking Stephen. He, was, he agreed with it. Go ahead and read, my brother. Not only that, El, but when you look at verse 55, it gives you that, uh, that trinity concept. Because it says, being full of the Holy Ghost, he looked up steadfast into heaven and saw the glory of God once, and Yahshua standing on the right hand of God. Mm -hmm. So there's your three right there. Of course it is. It's mentioned throughout the New Testament. Folks just don't see, see it for what it is, brother. Uh, go ahead and read, Steve. Verse... 59. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon Yah and saying, Lord Yeshua, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. 
And when he had said this, he fell asleep. And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Mm -hmm. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. Now, these people were, that were scattered abroad, what they did was went back to their own countries and so forth, and they began to talk about the things that had happened in Jerusalem. See, this is how the words first began to be spread. It wasn't spread first all over the earth, uh, the known uh, uh, earth at that time by the... Uh, by the, uh, 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 the apostles. It was spread over by the converts that had received the Messiah and went back to their own land. They just hadn't received the depth of what was going on. And this is where the apostles came in. Were these all Israelites? Of course they were. Of course they were. We're going to pick up the strangers. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 3. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and Hell and men and women committed them to prison. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached the Messiah unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spoke, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many were taken with palsies, and that were lame were healed. And that was great joy in, this, in that city. But there was a certain man called Simon, who had before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that he had given out that himself was some great one, hmm. to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard, because that for a long time he had bewitched them with sorcery. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Yeshua, the anointed one, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they would come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Yeshua. So what this shows is that you can receive the baptism and still don't have the Spirit. Amen. Just took you a quick bath, that's all. <laughs> Go ahead and uh, got wet, really. Go ahead and read, uh, brother. Verse 17. Then laid their... Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. Okay, my brother, chapter 9 and verse 1. And, you know, Elder, it, it, it reminds me when we talked about, uh, it mentioned that the, the men that had the unclean spirits and they came crying out with a loud voice, we certainly can read these things, but those of us who've been in this congregation for a while can testify to actually having seen this event take place mm -hmm. where a brother amongst us, I mean, all the things that we see here, it happened right before our eyes. That are wrong. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, uh, uh, demonic possession, unclean spirits, we may read these things and they seem far off, but this is very real. And I've never seen so many scared brothers at one time, <laughs> in one place in my life when that happened. Yeah, that was, that was kind of kinda a deep experience for us. Uh, real deep. Yeah, but it, 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 it did what it was designed to do. It united those that were supposed to be united and the rest it threw away. Go ahead, uh, chapter 9 and verse 1. And so, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogue, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, that he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shone round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul. Why persecuteth thou me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Yahshua, whom you persecute. It is hard for you to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, and astonished, said, Lord, what will you have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told you what you must do. Mm. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. 
And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. And there arose a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. Hmm. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. But behold, he prayed, and have seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he have done to your saints at Jerusalem, and here he have authority from the chief priests to ban all that call on your name. But the Lord said unto him, Go your way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house. And putting his hand on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Yahshua, that appeared unto you in the way as you came, have sent me, that you might receive the Holy, that you might receive your sight, I'm sorry, and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scaled. And he received sight and arose and was baptized. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples who were at Damascus. And immediately he preached the Messiah in the synagogue that he is the Son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them who call on this name in Jerusalem? And came here for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests? But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews who dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is the very Messiah. And after many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. But their line in wait was known by Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the disciples took him by night and laid him down by the wall in a basket. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he tried to join himself to the disciples. But they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. I guess not. This brother here had been killing up folks and having folks that delivered up to the high priest and so forth to have killed off, put folks in jail. I guess they didn't want, want Saul around you had to be kind of skeptical about a brother like that. But go ahead now, uh, 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 read, brother. Verse 27. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Yahshua. Okay, my brother, I don't want to go no further than that now. Let's go to chapter 10 and pick that up at verse 9. See, the Lord was preparing... He told Paul he was going to send him to the, to the Gentiles, right? He had to declare his name to the Gentiles and to the house of Israel, right? Okay, now let's go ahead and see see what the Lord is doing now. No Gentiles have been brought under this thing here now. And what we're going to do is we're going to pick this up uh, in the year of 38 A.D. Now this was just, uh, a little over 10 years after Christ was resurrected from the dead, right? Right? Okay, let's pick that up and see what happens. Chapter 10. Pardon me. Yeah, the Lord died in what year? Hmm? Was it? It was 30, right? Uh, 29, really. This is uh, 38, so it's nine years. Okay, nine years later. Okay. <coughs> verse 9. On the next day... That's uh, uh, chapter 10 and verse 1. It's verse 1? Mm-hmm. There was a certain man in Caesarea named Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. Now remember he said glory and honor to the Jew first, right? Now the, the Jews have had this thing ever since the Messiah showed up on the scene, haven't they? Right? Now the Lord has prepared a, a, a teacher to send to the nation because the nations had to be saved too. And that teacher that he prepared was, was Paul. Now it's time to bring the Gentiles. The table is laid, the table is set. Now it's time to bring the Gentiles in. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 2. A devout man, and one that feareth God with all his house, who gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming in to him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, 
your prayers and your arms are come up for a memorial before God. Amen. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodged with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell you what you ought to do. Now, he didn't send him to Paul. He sent him to Peter. Why? Because Peter was the one that had to open the door to the Gentiles. See? The Lord told Peter, said, Peter, feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. Feed my lambs. He said, other sheep I have that are not of this fold, them I almost also must bring, right? So now he's in the process of reaching out to the nations. But like I said, all of these things are given to the house of Israel first. You are the recipient of all these things. Go ahead and read, my brother. Verse 7. And when the angel who spoke unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of those that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. On the next day, as they went their journey and drew near unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the six hours. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. Now, the, the Christians like to get off into, well, this is getting off into the recleanization of the food. See, now that's what they're going to get off into. But as you read it, you're going to find out this didn't have nothing to do with food whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 12, in which were all manner of four-footed beasts of, of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Hmm. And the voice spoke unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, that call not you common. Mm -hmm. This was done three times, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men who were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for, for Simon's house and stood before the gate and called and asked whether Simon, who was surnamed Peter, was large there. Right. Now, Peter doubted as much as the spirit that Peter had. Peter doubted what this thing meant. But these Christians don't have no problem letting you know that this is the recleanization of the food. Now you can eat anything. Yeah. Go ahead and read. No. Verse 19. While Peter thought on the, on the vision, the spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise, therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, hmm. for I have sent them. Mm -hmm. Then Peter went down to the men who were sent unto him from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am he whom you seek. What is the cause for which you are come? And they said, Cornelius, the centurion, a just man, and one that fear of God, and a good report among all the nations of the Jews, was warned by God, by an holy angel, to send for you to his house, and to hear words of you. Then called he them in and lodged them. And on the next day, Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. And the next day after they entered into Caesarea, and the next day after they entered in, into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them and had called together his kinmen and near friends. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that would come together. And he said unto them, You know that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God hath shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Didn't have nothing to do with food, did it? Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 29. Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying, as soon as I was sent forth. I asked, therefore, for what intent you have sent for me. And Cornelius said, Four days ago, four days ago, I was fastening until this hour. And at the ninth hour, I prayed in my house. And behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, your prayers heard and your arms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa and call his Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is large in the house of one Simon, a tanner, a tanner by the seaside, who, when he cometh, shall speak unto you. Immediately, therefore, I sent to you, and you have well done that you are come. Now, therefore, are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded you of God. 
Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Hmm. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Yeshua the anointed one, his Lord of all, that word, I say, you know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Yeshua of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. But God raised, it, raised up, him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. Not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before by God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he who was ordained by God to be the judge of the quick and dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sin. While Peter yet spoke these words, the Holy Ghost fell up fell on all them who received the word, and they who heard the word, I'm sorry, and they of the Jews who believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Right, they were astonished because this, this is something that hadn't happened before. This is something that hadn't happened before. Israel had, 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 had to have the time to, to set up the first churches on the uh, uh, on the earth, so that everything, uh, so that they have a foundation that all the all the other nations could uh, uh, could call on. This is why they had things set up in Jerusalem the way that they did. When a problem, a real serious problem came up, the the brothers that was out in the field and settled this problem, what they did was they went back to Jerusalem and got these problems squared away. Yeah, you got a question, Mike? Yeah. Okay. Right, go ahead and read, Steve. Verse 46. But they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized who have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And they received the Holy Ghost before baptism, did they? Go ahead. They said they were speaking with tongues. These Jews were speaking in their own language? Speaking other languages. That's all the tongue is, another language. <coughs> That's all it is. Yeah, I know it was another language. God, God took care of that at the Tower of Babel. Why is this a sign of the Holy Ghost having felt and Because so that they could uh, talk with other people about what they knew, people of different languages, about what they do. That was all it was for. There's a lot of people. You gotta understand what was going on uh, at that time. Uh, 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 Ju Ju at that this time, Jerusalem was a, a, a pretty prosperous city, and there was a lot of people that was around about in Israel and different uh, different places that had heard the word of God and knew what was going on, but they hadn't heard the truth in the word of God. So what God did was give them this <coughs> Holy Ghost so that these people would know what was going on. But at this time, at this time, for me, it was that, that that still well look at uh, look at uh, look at a whole lot of other folks that got the spirit. They was among their own kinsmen. They still spoke other languages. See, that didn't have anything to do with it. It wasn't a, a a a language that other people couldn't understand. It wasn't that gibber jabber folks do in the church. It was given to them so they are <laughs> even Gentile. And people have a tendency to, 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 to believe more what the Gentiles, what their own people say, than they do strangers. And it's especially if they hear something coming from their own people pertaining to this thing, and then hear it coming from a stranger, they say, well, you know, I kind of heard something about that. You know, I'm, I want to hear something else about this. You see, that's what that was all about. It ain't that jibber-jabber. Now, understand this, too, though. It says that if it is some jibber-jabber that you are espousing in a congregation, then let somebody there uh, interpret. interpret that jibber-jabber. And don't let but one or two of them speak in that by course. Right. And if you're doing that, you're speaking to God. You're not speaking to the people. So you need to go in your closet with that jabber. Right. And then go ahead and speak to God. Right. In that unknown tongue, uh, if a person, like Paul said, if, 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 uh, if you all speaking in tongues and the unlearned come by and hear y'all, won't you think y'all all mad? Exactly. A bunch of barbarians? <laughs> huh? Because you won't understand what you're saying. Right. 
See, that's what that was all about, brother. It didn't have nothing to do with uh, nothing special that these that, that our people believe that you can't have the Holy Ghost. Some of the biggest uh, uh, sinners in the city walk around talking about they got the Holy Ghost and be in church every, every first day of the week call themselves speaking in tongues. Sadly, the Lord's Sabbath day. There's another thing from the, uh, oh, Okay, uh, verse 35. It says, but in every nation he that feareth God and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. For those who just read the, the New Testament and don't have the fullness of the doctrine taught to them, they could read that verse and think that God truly does not have a race of people that are set aside for himself, which is why there's so many people in the Christian uh, that have that Christian philosophy don't adhere to the children of Israel and what God has said about their place in earth and with him uh, regarding God. But that's why it's so important to have this whole doctrine. So you won't get those verses to get you um, confused about that. Well, they right. took things, they took all of that out of context, my brother, when he said there's no respect of persons with God. They took that all out of context. Right. If there was no respect of person with God, show me a covenant that was made with anybody except the house of Israel and our people in the line of Israel. Exactly. See? When the Messiah came, the Messiah could have been born to another nation, but he was born into the house of Israel. Exactly. And he himself said, I'm not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Right. See, that's who he was sent to. But his apostles were sent out to the Gentiles. Yeah. Now, did God only choose the, the three tribes, that's Judah, uh, Benjamin, and uh, the Levites? Those were the ones that was in the land at that time. <coughs> See, in 721 B.C., Shalmaneser had came up on Israel, and God had scattered Israel uh, all over Europe and the Middle East and Asia. You see, so the house of Judah, which was Benjamin, Judah, and Levi, was the only tribe that was left into the land. And when the Messiah was born, he was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The lost sheep of the house of Israel were the kings and the priests. That was Judah and Levi. So that's who he was sent to. Benjamin was given to Judah when the uh, tribes were separated, so J Benjamin didn't have no choice but to be there. And, Paul, and as a matter of fact, Paul even came out of Benjamin. You notice Paul didn't come out of Judah or Levi? Paul came out of Benjamin. He was sent to the Gentiles. Of course he did. You see, we, we, yeah, we gonna, we gonna, we gonna cover all that where them folks get around talking about these various religions, this, this yin-yang uh, that, uh, that they practice. Uh, 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 where are you, bro? Verse 48. Okay. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Okay, now hold your place right there. Let's go pick up a reference on this. Let's go into Isaiah chapter 49 and verse 1 through verse 26. Isaiah 49 and verse 1 through verse 26. Now, remember what has just taken place. The Holy Ghost was given to uh, the Gentiles, right? Okay, go ahead, brother. Uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 49, and pick that up at verse 1. Let's see what let's see what let's see what the Spirit had to say before he came and dwelt in this body here. Go ahead, my brother. Listen, O Al, unto me, and hearken, you people, from far. Yahweh have called me from the womb. From the body of my mother have he made mention of my name, and he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand have he hidden me, and made me a polished shell. In his quiver have he hidden me, and said unto me, You are my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for naught and in vain. Yet surely my judgment is with Yahweh, and my work with my Elohim. And now saith Yahweh, who formed me from the womb to be his servant to bring Jacob again to him. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of Yahweh, and my own name shall be my strength. To do what? To bring Jacob, uh, uh, God is going to be his strength to do what? Bring Jacob back again to God. Bring Jacob back and set them up as the rulers of this earth as God's chosen people. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 6, and he said, it is a light thing that you should have been my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give you for a light to the Gentiles that you may be my salvation unto the end of the earth. I will also give you for a light to the Gentiles. That had already been prophesied. 
that, that, that the Gentiles would receive the word of God. When our people came out of Egypt, it was a mixed multitude that came out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, there shall be one law for all, for the stranger as well as he that dwells among, uh, in the land. It's the same thing under the New Order thing. There's one law for all, for the stranger as well as he that dwell under, uh, 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 in the land. Why? Simply because, under the blood of the Messiah, rather. Why? Because these are the things that they're going to be judged by. Mm -hmm. I don't know who all was down in Egypt, brother. It wasn't just Israel. It wasn't just Israel. They had Hamites down there. They had people from all over there. E e Egypt was the power of the earth at that time. And the, right. Egypt was the power of the earth at that time, brother. So there's a whole lot of different multitudes of people that was in Egypt. And the reason why they left was because they saw that power that God had displayed, man. And uh, look what he did, man. All the plagues God brought upon man. When our people left Egypt, man, Egypt was a desolation. And there wasn't a house in the land of Egypt that didn't have at least one person in the day. You know, so uh, 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 it was a mixed multitude of people that was in Egypt that saw this power, and they came out. That's why the Lord uh, told them, say, now this law is not just for you, but it's for the strangers who dwell among you also. When you come in my house, brother, you got to go to church. When I go to church, you got to find you somewhere else to stay. <laughs> I'll open my hand. You come in there on, on Sunday, you got to next Saturday to stay there. If you don't go to church, you got to go. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 7. Thus saith Yahweh, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to him whom man despises, to him whom the nation abhors, to a servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise, Princes also, also shall worship because of Yahweh who is faithful and the Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose you. Amen. Thus saith Yahweh, in an acceptable time have I heard you, and in a day of salvation have I helped you, and I will preserve you and give you for a covenant of the people to establish the earth, to cause to inherit the desolate heritage, that you may say to the prisoners, Go forth to them who are in darkness, show yourselves. They shall feed in the ways, and their pastors shall be in all high places. Well, he sure will have to open the prisons, brother, because we got 38%, 38% of the prison population, brother, is, uh, is Israel. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. Verse 10. They shall feed, well, last part of verse 9. They shall feed in the ways, and their pastors shall be in all high places. They shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor sun smite them. For he who have mercy on them shall lead them. Even by the springs of water shall he guide them. And I will make all my mountains away, and my highways shall be exalted. Behold, these come from far, and look, these from the north and from the west, and these from the land of Asia. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains. For Yahweh have comforted his people, and will have mercy upon his afflicted. But Judah said, Yahweh have forsaken me, and my Lord have forgotten me. Can a woman forget her nursing child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yes, they may forget, yet will I not forget you. Behold, I have engraven you upon the palms of my hand. Your walls are continually before me. Your children shall make haste. Your destroyers and they that made you way shall go forth from you. Hmm. Lift up your eyes round about and behold. All these gather themselves together and come to you. As I live, saith Yahweh, you shall surely clothe you with them all as with an ornament and bind them on you as a bride does. For your ways, desolate places, and the land of your destruction shall even now be too narrow by reason of the inhabitants, and they that swallow you up shall be far away. The children whom you shall have after you have lost the others shall say again in your ears, The place is too straight for me. Give me, give a place to me that I may dwell. Didn't the Lord say as you grow, he's going to take other people's land and give it to you? Mm -hmm. Don't that show respect to a person? Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 21. Then shall you say in your heart, who have begotten me these, seeing I have lost my children, and am desolate, a captive, and removing to and fro, and who have brought up these? Behold, I was left alone. These, where had they been? Hmm. Thus saith the Lord God. Behold, I will lift up mine hand to the Gentiles and set up my standards to the people. And they shall bring thy sons in their arms, and thy daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders. And kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens your nursing mothers. 
They shall bow down to you with their face toward the earth and lick up the dust of your feet. And you shall know that I am the most high. But they shall not be ashamed who wait for me. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered? But thus saith Yahweh, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contended with you, and I will save your children. And I will feed them that oppress you with their own flesh, and they shall be drunk with their own wine, as with sweet their own blood, I'm sorry, as with sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that I, Yahweh, am your Savior and your Redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. Well, who are our oppressors? Who are our mighty oppressors? The nations, aren't they? The same good old Christian folks. Uh, uh, chapter 11. Uh, Acts chapter 11. Let's go back to Acts. Uh, Acts chapter 11 and pick that up at verse 19, my brother. chapter 11 verse 19 now they who were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only and some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene who when they were come to Antioch spoken to the Grecians preaching the Lord Yeshua and the hand of the Lord was with them and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch, who, when he was come and had seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and many people were added to the Lord. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that for a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. And the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. Now, it make it seem like this was a new thing. It was being called a new name about this. Let's go see. Hold your place right there. Let's go into chapter 18. Let's, uh, well, let's go and pick this up uh, at chapter 21. 11 years later after they started it. Mm -hmm. Chapter uh, uh, Acts 21 and verse 37. Let's go pick, pick this up. Uh, 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 18 years after this uh, incident right here. Acts 21 and verse 37. Let's see. Pick that up at verse 37. Acts chapter 21 verse 37. And as Saul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto you, who said, Can you speak Greek? Are not you that Egyptian who before these days made an uproar and led out into the wilderness 400 men that were, that were murderers? Now he thought it was an African, did he? Mm -hmm. See, say you that Egyptian that led them folks out of here? Right? Go ahead, brother. Verse 9. But Saul said, I am a man who is a Jew of Tarsus, a, a city in Cilicia, a citizen of no mean city. And I beseech you, suffer me to speak unto the people. Paul say, I'm a Jew of Tarsus, right? Paul didn't say he was a Christian. Paul say, I'm a Jew of Tarsus. Christianity is religion just like Judaism is. Just because they were called Christians, they just meant followers of Christ. Just because, but when you get back into into the history of this thing, you'll find out that uh, being called a Christian was a pretty dirty name back in them days. So go ahead and read, John. Stay, I'll go back to Acts 11 and pick that up at verse 27. Oh. Acts 11 and verse 27. See, Christ, you have to understand, Christ didn't say <coughs> salvation of was of the Christian. Christ said salvation is of the Jews. True that. Christ wasn't king of the Christians. Christ was king of the Jews. Jesus is king of the Christians. Come on. <laughs> go ahead and read, Rob. Acts chapter 11, verse what, 20? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, 
explain that again, Elder. I thought I had explained that uh, earlier when I said that the Gentiles had gotten them a new God. They called him Jesus Christ. Right. The Messiah's name was not Jesus Christ. His name was Yahshua. And they have an English translation of that, which is Yahshua. They didn't call the Lord Yahshua. They, put, they gave him a name. They called him Jesus Christ. They gave him a first name and a last name. And gave you a picture of him. Right. Jesus Christ. And the Renaissance, the Ninja Turtles, gave you a picture of him. So when, you're talking about, when they're talking about Jesus Christ, they're talking about their pagan God. When they're talking about Yahshua, they're talking about the God of Israel. Okay. Go ahead and read. Acts 11, what now? Acts 11, and I think we left off at uh, verse, 27. verse 27, yeah. And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch. Hold on just a minute. It's 27. Hmm? Oh, no, no, no. Go ahead. Acts chapter 11, verse 27. And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch. And there stood up one of them named Agabus, and signified by the Spirit that there should be great famine throughout all the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren who dwelt in Judea, which also they did, and sent it to the elders by the hand of Barnabas and Saul. Right, Paul told them, people said, now look, now y'all make up y'all bounty for me to come down and take it down out to Jerusalem. Say, now you lay it by in store, and on the first day of the week, I'm going to come and pick it up and take, take this bounty y'all are going to make, make up together. I'm going to take it down to Jerusalem for, for the poor saints that perhaps you given, uh, by you giving them these things, the blessing of God might, might come upon you. See, so what Paul and the apostles was in the uh, pro uh, process of doing was making sure that the monies and so forth that they were collecting from these various churches was going to uh, the saints down in Jerusalem because they was the one that needs the most help. And he told them, say, if you be partakers of our spiritual thing, it's no marvel that we should be partakers of your natural things. Well, go ahead and read, Steve. Verse, chapter 12, verse 1. <clears throat> now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it please the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of our living bread. Right. Now they're going to kill off all these folks. They, they're killing off the apostles. And, and uh, our folks who didn't believe, uh, uh, the, the ones that was Jews under the old order of things, uh, man, they was happy. He said, man, the Herod will start killing them off now. So go ahead now. Uh, uh, and he's talking about what now? He's talking about these are the, then were the days of unleavened bread, right? Amen. Now, Christians say Christ nailed all this to the, to the tree. Well, what they're doing uh, in the year 42, talking about Feast of Unleavened Bread. Go ahead and read, bro. Verse 4. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after after Oscar to bring him forth to the people. Right. It was already celebrating that pagan uh, uh, holiday called Easter back then, right? So what they did was they put him in prison and said, okay, we won't deliver him until after Easter. After Easter come, we had all our festivities and everything, and worship our God and everything. Then we'll take Peter out to the people. Go ahead and read, brother. Sure. Sure, the Gentiles were celebrating. Herod was celebrating the same day. The Gentiles celebrating. He was celebrating the day. The Jews celebrating. Herod was celebrating everybody's day. Now, but, let me ask you something. Here, here in reference, they're trying to say that Jesus was the Passover. Every part of the text of the Bible, when they had Passover, they simply say Passover. Easter is not Passover. I, I'm just saying, they make got a reference on the side where they got Jesus. Yeah, they do. And they're making it over here and they're saying that this is the Passover. It's not Passover. I'm just Passover. saying, in every part of the Bible, when they talk about the Passover, they simply say Passover. To show you that it's not Easter. To show you that it's not Easter. What day did God say keep the feast? On the 14th day of the first month at the going down of the sun, right? Sometimes they keep it the first month. Sometimes they keep it in the second month. It all depends on when the uh, summer solstice comes. Of course it has. Right. Of course right, it has. Right, right. This is the day of the day of heaven that takes place. Of course it has. See. How can you learn and stuff without the people? Uh, go ahead and... Uh, How can you teach stuff without the people? Come on. Go ahead and pick this up, Steve. Verse 5. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, 
But prayer was made without ceasing by the church of God, by the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, and the keeper before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shone in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. And his chains fell off from his hand. And the angel said unto him, Gird yourselves and bind on your sandals. And so he did. And he says unto him, Cast your garments about you and follow me. And he went out and followed him and knew not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. Hmm. When they were past the first and the second guard, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of its own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, and immediately the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. Okay, uh, 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 go to verse 24. Now, there came up a dissension among the apostles at a later time, and uh, a lot of people say, tried to say that this is where... Uh, uh, Mark and, 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 and Saul separated simply because Mark had a different doctrine. Mark had to go back to Jerusalem. They had meetings in his mother's house. Barnabas, Barnabas and Mark went back. Barnabas uh, wanted to take Mark. Oh, and, uh, right. uh, uh, and Paul thought it wasn't, he, he didn't want to take Mark because Mark had left him before and went and didn't go to the work that they was going to. But Mark had a charge in Jerusalem. He had to take it. He was having a uh, church in Mark, Mark's mother's house. Yeah, go ahead, uh, verse 24. My bad. But the word of God grew and multiplied. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry and took with them John, whose surname was Mark. Hmm. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon, who was called Niger. Well, the Gentiles were telling me on the job that this was bigger. They say this is where I came from. <laughs> <laughs> this, 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 that's where they told me I came from. <laughs> the river nigger. But anyway, and Lucius of Serene and Manaim, who had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work unto which I have called them. Hmm. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. And when they were at Solomon's, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, and they had also John to their minister. And when they had gone through the island to Papros, they found a certain sorcerer, a false Jew, whose name was Barhesus, a false prophet, I'm sorry, a Jew, whose name was Barhesus, who was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man, who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of Yah. Verse 13. Now when Saul and his company loosed from Papros, they came to Persia and Pamphylia. And John, departed, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. But when they had departed from Persia, they came to Antioch in Pisidia and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. And after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent out to them, saying, You men and brethren, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. Then Paul stood up, beckoning with his hand, and said, Men of Israel, and you that fear God, give audience. The God of this people of Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt, and with an high arm brought he them out of it. And about the time of forty years suffered he their manners in the wilderness. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he divided their land to them by lot. And after that he gave unto them judges for about the space of four hundred and fifty years unto Samuel the prophet. And afterward they desired a king. And God gave unto them Saul, the son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of forty years.